Well, first things first, Allez Les Bleus. Um, the team that I bought my first World Cup shirt and at the beginning of the tournament it was really the only one that I wanted to buy. It's this one, made it to the final. I'm very happy about that. And to top it off, uh, I'm, there's a good chance that I will have both home jerseys come Sunday of the teams that are in the final. That is unless Croatia tomorrow surprises against England. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. We have guaranteed a Nike final. What I said in the morning, Belgium was the last Adidas team. Uh, it's only Nike teams left in the comp competition. That in itself is something we've never had at the World Cup. Uh, and yeah, something different for once. We had an all Adidas final last year. We had Nike Adidas before. We had Puma versus Adidas. Nike versus Adidas. Yeah. <sighs> something new. All Adidas final. And we also have guaranteed that in the final we won't see the ugly Croatia shirt. I'm also very happy about that. So um, in a way for me personally all smiles around. Um, at least from the result. Again if Belgium would have won it, uh, depending on the matter of how they won it, I would not have been uh, disappointed or whatsoever. But France is one of the teams that I've always been supporting, um, especially thanks to Zinedine Zidane. I think once I saw him play, um, that was it. In addition to having stayed in school uh, in Paris for 10 days when I was really, really bad in French. Um, I suddenly started loving the, uh, the country of France. And there was a time when I was very good at French. At the moment, it's all long lost. If you don't use it, you lose it, unfortunately. Well, let's do it somewhat chronologically, my little um, summary of the game. First of all, there was the Jersey matchup, which was a disappointment. In my preview, I told you uh, what I put there with the yellow Belgium jersey, that this is my what I wish for, but you already saw with 60%, I think it was high. I saw it coming, uh, but I just didn't want to believe it and didn't want to put, put it there. I thought it would be so, look so much nicer if we have the dark blue versus the yellow. No, it was dark blue versus red, and if I'm right for tomorrow, we get for both semifinals a very similar color matchup. So, um, I did not like the all blue look for France. It just looks odd to me. Uh, I love their shirt, but it needs to be balanced with some red. The all blue um, just does, does look French. The only red we get is the one from this flag strap that they have on the back. Yeah, the all red for Belgium looks fine. Um, and yes, I said that I'm going to look for Belgium jerseys today. They were not discounted, but I saw uh, at one store all the World Cup shirts of eliminated teams were at half price. I am hopeful that tomorrow Belgium is at half price and I might get it. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that was the first slight disappointment. Um, I was surprised to see the French president and the Belgian king, given the relation with Russia, but uh, Putin was not there, so I think no one really minded. And uh, then the game started with kind of a bang. I think there were a lot more French than Belgian spectators there, but I might be wrong. But uh, the Marseillaise was really loud, whereas the Belgium anthem, you could hear some fans, but there were not too many. But yeah, the game started and within 30 seconds, Bappé made his first run and I thought, oh, yo, 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 this is going to go the right way. But I was wrong. Uh, first 10 minutes they were still feeling each other and then Belgium suddenly co took control. I better have to say Eden Hazard, Hazard, Eden Hazard took control of the game. Uh, he was clearly the play of the first half. Um, he made a lot of dummies, um, kind of always took the ball and you could see he's the, he, he is an absolute world-class player, a joy to watch. Um, of course, Mbappé is, as we saw in the second half, has similar nice touches, maybe even a little bit more tricky than um, Azar. But yeah, 
he dominated the first half and Belgium had some really good scoring chances um, but the first half it was not this dogged affair that I was expecting it was actually kind of open it was going up and down but it was ne never um, there were not then many goal mouth scenes to be honest uh, it was always that the last pass did not just arrive where it should be the biggest chance came I think it was all the world oh yeah of a tongue and I think it was all the world number number two that had the biggest chance for Belgium after a corner where Yoris made a really really great save uh, Belgium I think there was a shot I think by Azar that Varane put over the bar with the back of his head uh, was a huge chance I thought uh, that probably would have gone in if not for that slight touch um, and yeah uh, Belgium came out I think they've had a lead of in corners 4 to 0 at one point in the first half and that was actually kind of indicative that Belgium was more threatening I don't say they were necessarily better but they had the better chances um, and I think it was for the kind of the second time wave first time for real that you could see that um, with skillful players you can hurt the French defense especially if they're in the attacking third and now I'm looking at both other semi-finalists and see that neither of them have really have that what I was um, but what I was a little bit disappointed while watching Belgium it was Fellaini it was Azar but it rarely was Lukaku who barely saw a ball and it was barely De Bruyne De Bruyne was not really in game uh, to be honest I thought he was hit gun missing somehow and then starting minute 25 minute 30 suddenly France took over uh, it was really a little bit I, I first thought they are playing it in blocks 20 minutes Belgium is good then uh, came 20 minutes where France was actually quite good and they should probably also have had a goal there was this one uh, chance that I think it was no, there were two there was one where um, Mbappé had a long run in, in in the box and passed the pass in, uh, in and Giroud was not there because he could not read the uh, play correctly so he made a mess of that there was another one where we for the first time really saw nice passing moves by the French uh, in front of the box there were three or four short passes and then uh, Griezmann went all over the pitch unfortunately Giroud kept being oh, no, no no it was not Giroud because Giroud got hurt on that play uh, it was another player who was in offside so Griezmann had to make a bad shot and then another one where um, I think it was even was it Mbappé or Griezmann you know I, I'm, I, I'm doing this now from memory I haven't really saw that many replays and of course uh, tonight we had the kids play around us um, maybe a little bit too long but you know about you know it's just not worth it um, putting them to bed and missing games for that uh, part of the game for that so and we love them they should be around but problem is uh, you think they would let you watch nope they don't uh, they keep distracting it's fine I it is it, it, it is fine all overall but of course not what you really really want to do especially I was already tired from kind of an intense day at work so yeah I'm not complaining I'm happy to have them to be honest with you okay back to the game uh, there was the other one I think it was Griezmann who sent Pavar and then Griezmann uh, if Pavar made the shot that Courtois it would have gone to goal Courtois safety with his leg if he would laid it back to Griezmann Griezmann would have scored and it would have been a goal so uh, it was kind of even in terms of scoring chances at the first half um, I was a little bit surprised that given the injury to Giroud and so on there was only one additional minute one additional minute given um, at the game but yeah it was not a totally boring game but it was also not a super exciting game and I kind of felt you know many people said oh those girls are great offensive uh, teams they will go for it I knew that France will not go for it uh, France is playing best when they can rely on their rock solid foundation the six in the back uh, which 
I think many people still underestimate. And I have to say for the first time I actually saw that Pogba uh, from defensive midfield is a great contributor. Kante, endless worker, so uh, those two really keep uh, the team kind of on a solid base. I like that Kante is a little bit more composed than Pogba. Uh, that I have to say. Uh, the back four are vulnerable if played right. But today we had players that could exploit that. I'm not sure England or Croatia have those players, but we might see in the final. Maybe there's, uh, there's something I don't know. And then the second half, France got the early goal from a corner kick that MTT put in. I think they even threatened before that uh, shortly. And then I was waiting for Belgium to get back to the game and it never really came. Azar got, got tired because he was running like crazy in the first half. And uh, at least until the 70th minute, it was looked more like France is going is gonna make the second goal. Then they started holding back and kind of trying to kill off the game with all tricks in the book that are just legal. Uh, you know, having extended injury breaks, um, trying to um, postpone the throw-in and all those kind of uh, things maybe playing it a little bit slower maybe paying a, a few more passes and yeah Belgium I think had one shot that Joris had to save and that was it I was actually quite disappointed of what Belgium came I mean Martinez threw everything in the game to win it but there was nothing coming and it's weird because I thought the second half was a little bit better than the first half, uh, mainly because France actually dominated it really for uh, 20 solid minutes, I would say. Um, but what was missing, and that was better in the first half, is uh, the first half we had these blocks, first Belgium, then France. The Belgium was not present. They had no real chance going forward any anymore. France completely shut the game down and it was... Uh, really emphasized in the six minutes of added on time there was just nothing coming <coughs> excuse me there was they could kill the game of six minutes from uh, belgium had maybe the ball for less than a minute in those six minutes france had corner kicks they actually had chances but you could see there was one where mbappe was going and there was totally so to the left uh at the beginning of the game, he would have gone full speed and he would have been alone uh, at goal. No, he actually took it a little bit slower, then he passed to Tol 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 so who made a shot, would have gone in, it would have decided the game. That way they had a corner kick that gave them another minute. Uh, they played all throw-ins very short. They really avoided um, giving Belgium the ball. And that must be so frustrating if you're from, Bel if you're from Belgium. Absolutely super, super, super frustrating. And yeah, there was one scene at the uh, at the end where I thought um, Pogba almost got in a scuffle and you could see he was about to really do something and then he held back. No, don't get a red card. Don't do anything stupid now. We're going to the final. And yeah, so it proved. France, I mean, again, very mature, very, very solid performance. Nothing flashy. This is not a flashy France team. They could if they wanted. We saw a few short passing moves. If they wanted, they could. But they don't need to. They really want to conserve all their energies uh, as much as possible before they make it, before they uh, would open up. And that's the recipe for of, of a champion, to be honest. Now, of course, we have the history from two years ago, where also France was the winner of the tough bracket. They In the bracket they contained England, um, that contained Ireland, that contained Germany, that contained Italy, that contained Spain. Yeah. So uh, I think it was also Slovakia. No, not Slovakia. Who did Germany play? Yeah, I think it was Slovakia. Yeah, Slovakia. Uh, but you know, many big names in there. France won that one. Uh, and we can, if you look at my blog, it was uh, the way it happened, of course that it was in every stage, it was only one uh, big team clash and the one that moved on had the next big team clash and they lost. So that's why it ended up with France uh, 
and of course it helped that England uh, lost to Iceland yeah so this time again France won the tougher -tough part of the bracket um, and they had to go through three uh, I want to say even big name opponents and now they have to keep the concentration and finish the job against uh, either Croatia and England. That will be the thing that I'm watching. If they keep up their play that they had against Uruguay and that they had against um, Belgium today, which was not spectacular. And I think they will get a lot of hate for that. And I get it that the England story is much more appealing. But the professionalism that I saw in this France squad and the mature uh, play, absolutely mature, ice cold play. That's the stuff the champions are made of. And yeah, if I had to uh, pick today, I would go for France. Again, I am a France fan, and I actually remember I didn't say it in the predictions or something, but I said to my uh, colleague. About a month before the World World Cup, just logically it has to be France. I said Germany will not do it because they won the Confederations Cup and the repeating world champion. There's a curse on them, so they curse themselves twice. Um, then I said Spain will not do it because the country of the Champions League winner doesn't win the World Cup. Never has happened. Uh, actually, it also is true for the Euros, except for 1988, Eindhoven and the Netherlands. Um, so Spain is out Brazil <laughs> Brazil doesn't win in Europe except they did once 58 but that was a long time ago uh, so then the next in line was France and here we are uh, I was disappointed of France in the be at the beginning to be honest with you but the more I watched the squad it is not an exciting squad but it is the squad that champions are made of uh, it's also the most expensive squad, so that tells you a lot. I shared today on Facebook. If you go to my Facebook page, My Soccer Universe, uh, I shared an article how the French bench is more valuable than almost any other team at this World Cup first team lineup, and that is remarkable. So, there's a lot of quality on that bench. Um, again, I get it. The stories of the other two semi-finalists is probably a, a better one and bigger one and um, almost everyone maybe even me including I know I cheered for France but I think if there's a France England or France Croatia final I will have sympathy for the underdog uh, no doubt about that absolutely no doubt about that and I have to say both finals would be a very intriguing uh, matchup uh, to have especially the France-England clash. I think that would be a screamer here. Uh, that's such a classic. Um, yeah, but um, looking at the face of it, I think none of this team is an absolute good match for this France squad. So they will be favored. And if I had to pick today, I would pick France to win it all. Uh, I mean, I said it already after the quarterfinal. That f and although I was agonizing today, I still saw a slight advantage France, and so it proved. France is overall the better team, the more complete. They are the most complete team at this World Cup, and that says a lot given the quality that Brazil had. Yeah. Let me know what you thought about today's game, about France's chances, whether you were also disappointed about Belgium's second half. I'm still not sure whether Belgium could have done more or they just were incapacitated by the French style of play. I have an inkling it might be actually this fact. Well, hope you liked my take and yeah, I will talk to you soon, tomorrow. Uh, there will be a lot more talk about Croatia versus England. Up until then. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.